It's always good at the beginning of the meditation to survey your mind, to see what kind of shape it's in, and figure out what needs to be done to bring it into balance. Are you leaning toward thoughts of the future, leaning towards thoughts of the past? Things that put you in a good mood, things that put you in a bad mood. Try to learn how to read your own mind. And then you have a good idea of how to start the meditation. We want to get down to the breath. But sometimes there are other things in the way, so you have to clear them out first. Some of the problems might be your, some of the things you did or said in the course of the day. You can't go back and undo them, but you can make up your mind, okay, I've recognized that that was wrong. And you make a vow to yourself that you're going to learn how to not repeat that mistake. This is one of the reasons why we have the principles of right action and right speech in the, as part of the path, because without them, you really can't get the mind into right concentration. A lot of people want to go straight from right view to the meditation side. But the meditation side of the practice is, has to work its way through right resolve, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort. So you want to make sure that all those factors are present. And at the moment, you're not doing anything, you're not saying anything. But if there's any part of the mind that reflects back on something you did or said in the course of the day, and if you know that it was not right speech, okay, you have to recognize that. And that puts the mind on the right track. Same with right action. Anything you did that was opposed to the principles of right action, you want to make sure you recognize that it was wrong. That way, at the very least, you've got right view operating here. And then you can get down to work. Okay, what are the unskillful qualities? As the passage just now said, any unskillful qualities of the mind, what can you do to make sure they don't arise? And if they're there, what can you do to get rid of them? As for skillful qualities, what can you do to make them stronger? How do you strengthen your mindfulness? How do you strengthen your concentration? But just keep coming back. You have to be really on top of things. Right effort is what puts a little push on things. And it basically comes down to the desire to really do this well. We've been mucking around in our lives long enough. It's time that we actually got down to work. So whatever way you can to motivate yourself to be serious about being mindful, to be serious about being concentrated. Not necessarily grim or glum, but just do it well. This opportunity to practice doesn't come to everybody. We look at the world around us, it's pretty much of a turmoil right now. We've got a little quiet spot here for t the time being at least, so get your minds ready. Even if things don't become a turmoil here, the, your body is just a turmoil waiting to happen. Aging is going to happen, illness is going to happen, death is going to happen, all because of this body. You have to ask yourself, are you ready for it? If not, what needs to be done? What work do you need to do on your mind? Okay, you've got the opportunity to do that right now. Take advantage of it. The Buddha talks about generating desire. You can generate it through heedfulness, you can generate it through compassion, compassion for yourself, compassion for other people, other beings. The fact that if you practice well, life is a lot easier for everybody around you. You can work with pride and shame, pride in the sense that you want to master the skill, shame in the sense that you think about all the time you spent on this and there's still a lot of work to be done, so get to work. 
whatever motivation you find is working for you right now, okay, give yourself a pep talk using that. And then try to stay on top of things in the body and the mind right now, right now, right now. Because this is where everything is happening. This is where all the important things are happening. The news may tell us that you know, other things and other parts of the world are really important, really worth getting worked up about, and people do get worked up about them. But as the Buddha said, you're not going to go to hell and you're not going to go to heaven because of other people's actions. It's your actions that take you to hell, your actions that take you to heaven, your actions that can take you beyond heaven and hell, take you all the way to nirvana. And so you want to be on top of what you're doing right here, right now. Because this is where all the issues are, all the factors of the path. We chanted about them just now. Even though some of them have to do with your outside actions, they basically come down to your intentions. In terms of right speech, when you lie, you, the intention is to misrepresent the truth. When you speak divisively, it's to break people apart. When you speak harshly, it's basically to hurt other people's feelings. It's all a matter of intention. Engage in idle chatter. You just let the mind and the mind and your mouth run without any clear intention, which usually ends up in getting involved in some unskillful intentions. It's all coming out of the heart, all coming out of the mind. Same with right action. Kill, steal, engage in illicit sex. Even when we're doing that on the outside level, sometimes the mind's really involved with that. Same with right livelihood. If your livelihood is engaged in something that's oppressive to other people, you're going to deny it. And that puts up a huge wall between you and the opportunity to gain some insight. So all these factors of the path. Even the outside ones are focused back in, right here, because right here is where you're generating suffering, and this is where you can learn how to stop it. So try to bring your attention to what you're doing right now, because that's your ability to reflect on your state of mind, reflect on the actions of the mind, where you begin to start reading things inside. And you get a pretty clear sense of the work that needs to be done. It's very easy to get sloppy about this or complacent. But the Buddha said it's your sense of heedfulness is what's going to see you through. Because if you put things off to tomorrow or put things off to the next hour or put them off to any other place, the work is not going to get done. We don't know how much time we have. To try to be on top of what's happening right now and learn how not to see things in line with your old biases. The Buddha talks about being biased through things that you like or things that you're angry at bias through fear, bias through delusion. In Thai they call this taking sides with yourself. In other words, whatever your opinions are, you tend to see things. It's got to be true that way. And the only hope you have in any kind of practice is to be able to step back from your opin opinions and step back from your old habits and say, wait a minute, this is not working. Something needs to be done. That's where the path begins. So be on top of what you're doing. In other words, part of the mind is doing something, but the other part wants to observe it. This is where the committee of the mind is a useful thing. If there were just one of you in there, there'd be no way that you could question your opinions, because your opinions would be your opinions, and that would be it. But if you could realize, okay, there's other beings in here, other voices, 
other opinions, trying to figure out which ones are speaking wisdom right now, and listen to them. Get the observant ones to watch the ones that are acting. That way you can use the, the committee of the mind to good advantage. <laughs>